all praise glory honor and adoration to you abba father all praise glory honor and adoration to you lord jesus christ all praise glory honor and adoration to you god the holy spirit in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the grace and peace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all dear brothers and sisters in christ one of the most important qualities attributed to god is his holiness god is a holy and it is for this reason that there is no iota of blemish in him he is all goodness that is why angels ceaselessly proclaim holy 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 sanctus 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 that is the song of the angels and saints in heaven and we as his children his chosen ones are invited to be holy just as the famous old english saying goes as is the father so are the children as is the father so is the son we as the children of god the father who is all holiness we are invited to be holy and this is the phrase that keeps repeating like a refrain in the book of leviticus god inviting his people to be holy just as he is holy one of the most important texts where we find god inviting his people to be holy and blameless in his presence is from the book of leviticus chapter 11 verses 44 and 45 for i am the lord your god sanctify yourselves therefore and be holy for i am holy you shall not defile yourselves with any swarming creature that moves on the earth for i am the lord who brought you up from the land of egypt to be your god you shall be holy for i am holy now why should god invite us to be holy why should we be holy why should he expect us to live a life of holiness because God has created us in his own image and likeness. So if we are extensions of God's very being and if God is the all holiness then it is proper that we also are holy. We are invited to reflect the holiness of god in our lives this is the frequent invitation that god extends to his people his chosen people of israel in the book of leviticus again we see god's invitation in chapter 19 of leviticus verse 2 speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them you shall be holy for i the lord your god am holy we are invited to be part of god's 
own holiness. And again in the book of Leviticus chapter 20 verse 7 Consecrate yourselves therefore and be holy for I am the Lord your God. Again chapter 20 verse 26 You shall be holy to me for I the Lord am holy and I have separated you from the other peoples to be mine. The people of Israel are the people God has chosen as his own people. That's why he would claim them as his own people and he would be their God. This is the covenantal relationship that God established from his servant Abraham and his descendants that they will be his chosen people and he will be their God. And from the time of Abraham, one of the signs of this covenantal relationship that God is their own God and they are the chosen people of God is the circumcision. It is a sign of this covenantal relationship between God and his people. And it is because of this covenantal relationship that God he expects his people to be holy. And we see St. Peter echoing these words of uh, the book of Leviticus in chapter 1 where he is inviting the believers to live a life of holiness. The first letter of Peter, chapter 1 verses 13 to 21. It is an invitation to life of holiness. Let us attentively listen to this invitation because this invitation is extended today to each one of us. First letter of Peter, chapter 1, verses 13 to 21. Therefore, prepare your minds for action, discipline yourselves, set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires that you formerly had in ignorance. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. If you invoke as a father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors not with the perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without a defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead, and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. We are called to live a life of holiness because God who has invited us to this way of life is holy. And how did he make us holy? We have not been holy. It is through the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that we have been washed clean and have been 
given the crown of holiness that's why if today we realize in the presence of god that we have not been living a life of holiness we have nothing to be afraid of nothing to lose hope because we have our savior lord jesus christ who by shedding his blood on the cross is wiping away all our sins all our guilt so that we may stand holy and blameless in the presence of god our loving father in the old testament the word in hebrew used for holy is kadesh which means set apart who has been segregated who has been called to live a life of sacredness morally blameless life to be saintly in our characters thus we are a people who are set apart from the world jesus had prayed to the father that he is not removing us from the world because we will live in this world but by our behavior by our character by our life we will show that we are a people who are set apart who are a people consecrated who have been sanctified by the anointing holy spirit it is only after we are washed clean by the precious blood of our lord jesus christ that god will pour his spirit upon us he will anoint us with his spirit so that we stand holy and blameless in his presence and praise his glory holy 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 is the lord god of power and might so today we recognize this great invitation that god is extending to us and saint paul will uh, remind us about this uh, invitation in his letter to the ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 that we have been chosen by god it is not that by fluke we are uh, called to this way of life we have been chosen by god the letter of saint paul to the ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 just as he chose us in christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love it is through our lord jesus christ that god our father had destined us to be holy and blameless in his presence and in baptism we receive the garment of holiness and we are invited to keep that holiness intact till we leave the world but the impurities of the world the attractions of the world the pushes and pulls of our world they take us away from this holiness and today we are invited to come back to the lord to purify ourselves to allow ourselves to be cleansed by the saving blood of the savior to receive his anointing so that we recognize that we are set apart from this world to be holy and blameless in his sight and again saint paul 
will remind Timothy, his disciple, to live this life of holiness. In chapter 1, verse 9, who saved us and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. So holiness is not that we merit by our good works or by our good character, but it is a gratuitous gift of God. It is the free gift that God pours on us freely. We do not deserve this grace, free gift. We are unworthy of beholding this free gift that God pours out on us. It is not because we merit it, but it is the free gift. God, out of his love, because of the life that his son, our Lord Jesus, has given to us, he pours out that gift to us. So today we receive that gift with gratitude in our hearts so that we may stand holy and blameless, spotless in his presence and serve him till the end of our lives. In the history of the church, we have innumerable men and women who had strived to live the life of holiness. We call them saints and blessed. These are the men and women who have cleansed themselves by the blood of the Lamb and are wearing that white robe of holiness standing before the throne of God, praising His glory for endless ages. And Pope Benedict the Sixteenth would call them the revolutionaries of holiness. The saints and blessed we honor in the church are truly people who have revolutionized spirituality for our times. By their life of holiness, they have given a new way of life that is in consonance with the ways of the Lord, which goes against the ways of the world. And it is this invitation to life of holiness that we find in the book of Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. Micah presents to us three ways how we can live a life of holiness. Three simple ways. Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Three ways how we can strive to be holy. To do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with our God. And on the basis of St. Peter, first letter of St. Peter, chapter 1, verses 13 to 18, we have three ways how we can live this life of holiness. The first way is to have a prepared mind. 
we see in verse 13 of uh, the first letter of Saint Peter chapter 1 verse 13 gird your loins to be prepared to be awake to be alert so that we do not be carried away by the world there is a strong current that we are in and if we allow ourselves to the ways of the world we will be carried away by the strong current we will not be able to withstand the current because the current is so strong that we need to be constantly on the alert awake to fight against the current to swim against the current so we need to have a prepared mind we need to prepare ourselves so that we are on a strong foundation like the house that is built on a rock based on the word of God that is being peculated into our daily life so that no currents of the world no values of the world may drift us away may carry us away the second way is to live a changed life in verse 14 Peter is telling us not to be conformed to our former ways we have been redeemed by the precious blood of our Savior so we should not go back to our former ways ways of selfishness self-centeredness of uh, yielding to lust, jealousy, greedy, greediness. We need to live a changed life. We need to conform ourselves to the new ways, the ways of the Lord. And the third, to keep our eyes fixed on the Lord Jesus. In verses 17 and 18 of chapter 1 of the first letter of St. Peter. To fix our gaze on the Lord Jesus. The one who gave his life for us so that we may live fully. And it is through him that we are able to call God our father. He is the one who taught us a new language of a relationship. That God is not a fearful God, but He is our loving Father, Abba. So we need to keep our eyes fixed on the Lord Jesus. Because it is the Lord Jesus who will hold our hands and lead us to the Father the fullness of all goodness, fullness of all holiness. We have numerous saints in the world who are models of holiness. And in the recent times, we have come across Mother Teresa, who had lived in this very city, sanctifying our country, our world, and standing as a remarkable model of holiness it was not a life of seclusion of cloistered life but living an ordinary life in an extraordinary way she had shown us that we too can be holy and mother Teresa had told us that holiness is not the luxury of a few. 
It is a simple duty for you and for me. We have been created for that. So let us be holy as our Father in heaven is holy. So it is not that only great people can be saints, can live a life of holiness. It is not that only fathers, bishops, sisters and brothers can be holy. Every person in this world can be holy. Doing ordinary things in an extraordinary way. Adding love in our simple works. It is a simple duty, Mother Teresa says, for you and for me. And we have been created for that. To be holy as our Heavenly Father is holy. Mother says, holiness is not the feelings of an imagination. It is a reality. One thing that helps me and will help you is this. Works of love are works of holiness. If there is love in our hearts, out of that love will bloom the blossoms of holiness. Mother had shown that by her life, all our actions of love bore the blossoms of holiness. Mother continues, Nothing can make me holy except the presence of God. And to me, the presence of God is a fidelity to small things. Fidelity to small things will lead to Christ. Infidelity to small things will lead you to sin. So fidelity to small things. Let us not think of big things. Sitting at the church for 24 hours, non-stop, without eating, without uh, drinking water, without resting. No, we don't need to think of extraordinary things. We can do simple things with great love, great devotion, great fidelity. That's why what God has invited is not so much to be successful in the world, but to be faithful to Him. To hold the spirit of fidelity to God. In answering, in responding to his invitation. And this is what the uh, psalmist, King David, is praying for in Psalm 27. A beautiful psalm. A triumphant song of confidence, seeking God, finding Him, and living in His presence. And that is what holiness is, to seek the Lord, to find the Lord, and to live in His holy presence. Let us now prayerfully listen to these words of confidence in the Lord. Psalm 27 The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter 
in the day of a trouble he will conceal me under the cover of his tent he will set me high on a rock now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me and i will offer in his tent sacrifices with the shouts of joy i will sing and make melody to the lord hear o lord when i cry aloud be gracious to me and answer me come my heart says seek his face your face lord do i seek do not hide your face from me do not turn your servant away in anger you who have been my help do not cast me off do not forsake me o god of my salvation if my father and mother forsake me the lord will take me up teach me your way o lord and lead me on a level path because of my enemies do not give me up to the will of my adversaries for false witnesses have risen against me and they are breathing out violence i believe that i shall see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living wait for the lord be strong and let your heart take courage wait for the lord in the recent times we have come across a saint who has shown us what it means to have a courage to choose god and his ways in 1800 94 in Poland was born a child a boy Maximilian Kolbe later on this Polish boy joined the conventional franciscan friars and he became a priest He died at the very young age of 46. But within this time he had achieved remarkable holiness. At the age of 12, Maximilian Kolbe had a vision of Our Lady with the two crowns, one a white crown, another one red the white crown symbolizing life of holiness piety and the crown of red symbolizing the life of martyrdom and mother mary asked young maximilian which of these two crowns he would like to choose and maximilian had chosen both the crowns in 1941 maximilian kolbe received the crown of martyrdom after he was arrested by the nazi government he was put in in the concentration camp in Auschwitz and when one of the prisoners had escaped the camp 10 of the prisoners were picked up randomly and one of the 10 was in pain and agony remembering his wife and the children and it is at that time maximilian kolbe came forward to take the place of this absolute stranger to die without water or food to die starvation death his request was accepted 
and after two weeks of starvation when all the others have died maximilian continued to be alive and since the cell was required for some other prisoners Maximilian Kolbe was injected with carbolic acid and he died he died the life of a martyrdom giving life to somebody else there is no greater love than this that you give your life for your friends and this is this was not a friend but by giving his life to this stranger maximilian kolbe had a reach that summit of holiness that was instilled in his heart by the grace of the lord jesus so let us today pray for that spirit of holiness we may cultivate that spirit of holiness in our hearts that we may reflect the holiness of god our loving father let us close our eyes and call upon god our father god our merciful father we thank you for calling us to the life of holiness you are the holy god and you desire us to be holy like yourself grant us the grace by choosing you and your kingdom values by going against the values of our world we may stand for you and nurture cultivate day by day this spirit of holiness that one day we may be counted in the countless saints and blessed in your heavenly kingdom to receive that crown that you have in store for your holy men and women and we seek this grace through the precious blood of your son who has cleansed us to be holy and blameless in your sight that by the merits of his passion death and resurrection we may receive this great gift of holiness in our lives we make this prayer in the holy name of jesus our lord amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen